All right, hey everybody, we are back here with a uh, another Thursday news segment. I believe I'm going to do two of these for today, but this one we got 10 of them to get through, 10 pieces of news, so we're going to move pretty quick. Uh, this one here is pretty interesting. We knew this was happening already. Chrysler did start. It's been that way with Chrysler for a while now. Others are taking note. This article is about a girl who uh, bought a Nissan and she went to take it to her mechanic, but he's not allowed to work on it. Um, she says, I would not have bought the car. We've seen this, like I said, when it comes to... Uh, uh, Stellantis basically Ram Dodge was the first one to start this but uh, in order for you to get access to the scan tools or to be able to use their system with your scan tools and be able to tack or dive into their computer systems uh, for their codes and the things like that you have to pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee as a mechanic in order to do that um, and not a lot of mechanics are doing that with, cause you got to do it with all these companies. Like I said, more are jumping in here. Uh, see right here, it says, uh, if you have a newer vehicle, specifically a Nissan, a Chrysler or a Subaru, you're going to want to stay for this because those are ones that are charging. Does it say in here? Um, I didn't actually even read it, uh, right here. Uh, base quotes, uh, she said she'd have to pay around 150 to $270 extra, um, if she took her car to a Nissan dealership rather than her auto repair store, but her auto shop would not uh, be able to take it because they don't pay for the yearly subscription through uh, Stellantis or Nissan or Subaru or any of that stuff to, for them to be able to use their codes and understand that stuff. So just know that this is the way it is now. This is how it's continuing to be. Uh, like I said, Stellantis started it and uh, now you got more following suit. Pretty soon it's going to be all this way. The reason that they do this is um, Stellantis says that they don't want just any mechanic shop working on their cars. They want them to be pre-tested and certified to be able to work on their vehicles so that they make sure they're done right. So in a sense, they are kind of looking out for the consumer to make sure that no backyard hacks are screwing stuff up on there. But on the same note, on the flip side of that, um, it is kind of a uh, you know, pain in the butt for us. But uh, now it's not just Stellantis. It is now Nissan and it is Subaru. So uh, keep that in mind. They are moving that direction where your backyard mechanic or your local guy just down the road, he may not be able to plug in his scanner and work on this unless he's actually a part of their programming and system and he pays yearly, whatever it is. It's not huge. I heard Scott uh, uh, Kilmer talking about this. Um, uh, God, it's, it was years ago he was talking about this. And I want to say it was something, I, I don't know, but it wasn't bad. It was like 50 bucks or 100 bucks. Uh, you know, per year or something for him to access this and prove that he could do it. But anyway, there you go. Just something to keep in the back of your mind. Next one we got up here. Again, I do talk fast because I want to get through them as quick as I can for you. Uh, Ram, the 2025, which is coming out with that Hurricane. We know that new Hurricane engine right here is going to be out in that model. It is a uh, twin turbo uh, inline six. What a wicked motor. God, I love the inline sixes and the power of them. And that's how Cummins was too with their... Uh, you know, they're, they're diesels too, but the inline six of this, you know, I, I, I love it. I'm so excited for this motor, this new hurricane to come out. Now, don't get me wrong. I'll miss the Hemi. The Hemi was an amazing motor, but I am excited for this. Well, <clears throat> you can read through all this stuff. Basically, all I want to talk about is the gas mileage for it when it comes out. So here we go. Uh, 2023, uh, Hemi right here you are getting 15 and 21 for the four-wheel drive okay you can read the other ones if you want I'm only concerned with the four-wheel drive you are 15 city 21 highway that was what you were getting with it and with the new high output um, the hurricane motor that 580 or something horse motor you are at the same thing as what the Hemi was 15 and 21 that's pretty impressive if you get the standard output you're at 17 and 24, which is almost as good as what the uh, V6 is. The Pentastar V6 is in there. So pretty impressive numbers. We're going to not hang and linger on this too much longer. There, Like I said, we know it's coming out pretty soon. And uh, it's looking super impressive. It's you know beautiful truck. It's got a lot of potential, and I like a lot of things about it. We'll be talking about it more as it comes out. But that's your gas mileage numbers. They're basically the same between a Hemi and a Hurricane. That's pretty impressive uh, that you're getting that. You're getting a lot less emissions out of that Hurricane, which matches uh, the government, the stupid government infringement garbage that they do. But anyway, um, pretty good numbers. Now here, 
uh, Nissan is uh, going to, the, the main takeaway from this, I read this article and it was kind of boring and not impressive. So I'm just going to tell you that uh, Nissan is kicking out, they want to bring out seven new vehicles and including in those vehicles, one of them is a truck. So here's what their plans are uh, in America. They are going to increase uh, regional sales by 330,000 units they want by 2026. Uh, compared to what they had in 2023, they're going to invest 20 million U.S. dollars in integrated customer experience in the U.S. Uh, in U.S. and Canada, launch seven all new models. Okay, in the U.S. Or in the U.S., refresh 78 percent of the passenger car lineup, Nissan brand, and launch e-power and plug-in hybrids. Okay. <clears throat> that's all cool but here's the big takeaway is that nissan is going to be partnering with mitsubishi on a brand new truck and it is going to probably replace what we saw as a titan we see down here um on here next gen is going to be a one ton uh in max but keep in mind that a one ton a one ton here is like it's like you know f-350s uh silverado 1500s ram 15 or 3500s uh these kind of things but um the l200 like in Mexico, basic, basically, if you want to read through it, you can. They're talking about the Navarra truck, things like that. But in reality, what it boils down to is this is going to be a merger with them that is probably going to be something that's going to replace what the Titan was. Uh, coming out by 2026 is kind of what like, it looks like possibly uh, is what their game plan is. Moving on from there. Um, here it is again. You can kind of see. So um, pretty interesting. We'll see. Here's an, You know, you got two pictures of it, two styles. Uh, we shall see what they do with it, but it's kind of cool they're getting back into the full-size truck frame. Um, this one here, this is becoming a problem. I've seen this article. I grabbed the one from San Diego, but I see it in New York. I see this popping up all over my newsfeed. <clears throat> Basically, if you got a 4Runner, you might want to put some, some wheel locks on it. Um, we have not for ours yet, but it's something to consider. But uh, for some reason, 4Runners, um, especially the TRD off-road models um, and the sport models, but they are, they're still... They're taking wheels like crazy. Uh, they're in, they're out, they're stealing them like crazy. They want your wheels, so just keep that in mind. They're pulling them uh, like you wouldn't believe. So there's, you know, something to something to keep in mind. Uh, just a quick tip for you that these guys are, see, everywhere you go, they're coming after them. So um, they're even on the Tacomas. Steal, the Toyota wheels, for some reason right now, are a real hot item, and uh, they want them. So just keep that in mind. They're, they're yanking them like crazy. Moving on from there, this one here. Uh, this one is another theft one that I thought was pretty interesting. This is out of Toronto. But how sad is it in our in, in the world today that we have to act, that you got people doing this? So here's a guy. Um, he owns a, I believe it's a Ferrari. He has white Ferrari. But anyway, um, doesn't look like he has a garage that he can fit it in, as according to why he parks it there. But look, he actually installed these pop-up. Uh, bullards or whatever they call them to actually prevent people from trying to steal his car sick world we live in when you have to do this stuff uh to try and protect what's yours just so sad moving on from there this one here um this one i'm actually thinking about doing a full video on this one because it is pretty cool and this is a sweet vehicle i do not like evs you guys know that i cannot tolerate evs but this is one to buy if you are looking for an ev and i think about my daughter a lot with this one um you know she's you know uh 22 years old she's a mom she's married she's you know there's they're like everybody else they're you know they got their own house they're struggling like crazy on one income um you know it, it, times are tough for a lot of people and uh you look at something like this 169 dollar per month kia lease okay on a on an all electric vehicle no buying gas no nothing 169 bucks a month pretty impressive um and that uh you know so really even if you in, take in this two thousand dollar charge up front do it signing it still breaks down only 252 bucks a month <clears throat> or you put the two grand down and you're at 169 per month here's the vehicle pretty sweet pretty impressive uh 24 month lease but we are talking about a uh you know a, a brand new car and one you don't got to pay gas on for 169 dollars a month that's pretty unheard of today it's a pretty sharp little ride they show you some more in here um and like I said, I might even do a full video on this car because I do think, you know, let me know if you want to, if you want to see it. Many of you guys probably aren't interested in EVs. I'm not. But this one grabs my attention because I can see the value and benefit of something like this. Uh, even the inside, sharp looking little car. 
and uh, finally something that's kind of affordable, looks kind of sporty, um, you know, but a perfect vehicle for, for college students, for people that, you know, don't have a lot of money that, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of benefit to something like this. So I think it's a pretty sweet little ride, kind of interesting, um, 133 horsepower and 188 foot pounds of torque, but it is electric. So remember that 133 horsepower comes on pretty good and strong. Um, Oh, uh, that is the electric SE. They also got an SEL that kicks it up a bit, uh, bigger battery. But like I said, interesting, interesting. And I love seeing that price right there, uh, finally. So that's a very nice thing. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Nissan wants to off or wants into the off road game with a new Xterra. Okay, so um, yeah, we know they're going to come out with seven new vehicles. We talked about it. One of them they want to be an Xterra again, but they do not want to do it like they did the the uh, Pathfinder. You know, they don't want to, they, they want to do it right. So they say on here, where did I see it? Uh, uh, right here, one of the chief criteria he listed was it's got to be authentic and it has to be a serious truck. Basically, it can't just be a rogue with all-terrain tires, but something with real truck capability. He also noted that in a world or, or that it would both need to be relatively inexpensive as well as incorporate some of the modern design details. So um, pretty interesting. They're talking about something that's not going to be uh, very expensive, yet it's going to be a serious truck. So we shall see what they do with that. But that's what the new Xterra, you know, and that's not the truck we were just talking about. This is Xterra. They are kicking around, bringing that back out. So uh, very excited to see what they're going to do with that. I loved this gen. My buddy John had one of these things, and it was fantastic. Such an incredible little SUV. So hopefully they bring it back the right way and not do like they did with the Pathfinder, um, which is still a nice vehicle, but it's nothing as capable as these are. And we would like to see this capability brought back uh, to an SUV in Nissan's lineup. Uh, this one right here, Stellantis, uh, they are um, ads. Well, I don't even see where I can close that ad. I don't even see it. It just stays there. So it is. But uh, anyway, long story short, on uh, the um, and on a different article, I believe it was, because this one doesn't tell us, does it? No, it's a very short article, but I think there's 188,000 Ram trucks if the this uh, HD. So if you got and it's the 35, 45, and 5500 trucks. Um, there's a case. It's a snap ring and a transmission is failing. There's been about 80 people that uh, have have yeah 82 complaints alleging loss of power due to an internal transmission failure of the K1 snap ring. So they are getting involved in this and uh, they are in the process of figuring out what they're going to do and how this is going to be resolved, whether it's recall or whatever it is. Keith, takeaway here though is. Think about that. Everybody's talking about, oh, oh, this is reliable. This is not reliable. You can't have this. Oh, this. Na it is a snap ring. A simple snap ring has affected 188,000 trucks of interest in a transmission because of a simple snap ring. This is the world we live in today. It does not take much to knock one of these vehicles down and, you know, halt everything. So just keep that in mind. Moving on to the next one. My God, we're 13 minutes in. I'm sorry. Um, Detroit went big on expensive EVs. Okay. Again, you, it's, all this stuff is here. So if you want to read where they are, I got all the addresses listed here. So you can pause it and then type, start typing this stuff in. It'll pull up. If you start typing business insider Africa and then this, it'll pop up. So <clears throat> like I said, I get my news from everywhere. Um, but you can go to the whole article if I'm going too fast and you're not getting enough out of it and you want to look it up. That's how you do it. But the big takeaway from here is, uh, Blah, 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 that uh, Ford can't sell an EV, Chevy's having a hard time selling EVs, and, uh, you know, they say for every electric vehicle sold for $50,000, a car company loses six grand. I doubt it highly, but that's what, you could go read this study from Boston Consulting Group, which I'm sure is paid for by all the uh, car manufacturers. I don't buy into any of that crap. Um, but point that I see in here was one simple line uh, right here, right here. Okay, uh, Ford, the automaker recently delayed the upcoming three-row EV to focus on, right here, a trio of $25,000 electric vehicles. And right here, GM is taking another approach, pulling back on EV production as the company plans to bring more hybrids 
um, out to North America. Well, so Ford is trying to kick out. They realized that the Mach-E didn't do nothing. They realized the Lightning is a total disaster. And so they decided we're going to come out with a trio of cheaper $25,000 vehicles. That's Ford's take. GM, along with Toyota, takes a different approach. This Toyota is not listed in here, but they're doing the same thing. They're focusing very highly on more hybrids. So it just kind of gives you a little heads up on what they got going on. Um, and the EV thing here, the EV thing is a mess. Um, moving on from there, uh, last one on here, ads popping up. Uh, out of curiosity, anybody on here want to know or take a guess on how much uh, Ford CEO Farley earned in 2023? Not that it matters, not that I expect it any different, but we're going to show you because I happen to find it here on Ford Authority. Uh, so here you go. That's last year, last year, the year before, which you can see here. Um, in 2021, he made $22.8 million and uh, it raked in in, where was it? Uh, increase over his 29, that was in 2020, he made $11 million and uh, jumped up in 2019. And then in 2021, he increased to 22.8 million. And currently, right now in 2023, uh, Farley makes 26 million dollars, counting including compensations. But uh, 26 million dollars a year is what he makes uh, from Ford. And uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. You can think about it any way you want to, or do whatever you want to do with the information. I'm just passing along for you. But there we go. We are 16 minutes in, and that is a quick uh, news for uh, this Thursday. As always, I appreciate you watching. And any questions, put them in the comments below. All right, talk to you soon.